We left this project network diagram and duration calculation at the forward pass. After the forward pass is completed, now you conduct the backward pass. You start at the very end of the project, in this case it's duration of 100, and then you subtract and go backwards. 100 and the duration of H is 15, so 100 minus 15 is 85. All right, just like the forward pass, when you have activities from one node going to multiple nodes, the duration uh, carries over. So uh, G, E, and F are all 85. Now we're going backwards and we're subtracting. So 85 minus 35 in the case of G is 50. So we move 50 to D. D minus 20 is 30. And then B, 30 minus 5 is 25. Okay, you do the same thing with E. 85 minus 50 is 35, and 85 minus 15 is 70. Now we have a dilemma. Remember in the case of the forward pass, when you have multiple activities. Remember we had multiple activities uh, going into um, node H. The rule was you take the longest of the activities. When you're doing the backward pass, if you have multiple activities feeding into a, a particular node going backwards, you then take the shortest uh, of the activities. So F is 70, E is 35, the shortest duration is 35. So we plug in 35, subtract 25, that's 10, and then we have B and C feeding into A. Remember in the backward pass, unlike the forward pass, we take the shortest duration. So we put a 10 minus 10 is zero. So we've completed the backward pass. Now the next step is to put it all together. With the results of both the forward pass and the backward pass, uh, we see something important. We subtract uh, the top left-hand corner from the bottom uh, left-hand corner, or vice versa, to see what's the difference between these two. So A starts at zero. Uh, so there is no predecessor, so you see zeros in the left-hand corner of node A. All right, but B uh, begins at time 10 because A ends at 10, C begins at time 10. Uh, but notice that in the backward pass, uh, the latest that could start was uh, 25 units. We calculated the 25 from the 30 minus 5, uh, so if you subtract 25 from 10, you have 15. Notice that B has 15 in the middle, the left-hand uh, middle row, whereas C has zero. Okay, here's what this means. At the conclusion of the forward and backward pass, whenever you see a number in the middle, for example, B has 15, D has 15, G has 15, uh, that's the number of days you can delay that activity without delaying the overall project, and that is referred to as float or slack. So B, D, and G have 15 uh, in terms of float or slack. F has 35. But notice C, E, and H all have zeros. That means zero float, zero slack. That means these activities cannot be delayed, and if they are, the overall project is delayed. So this means we have discovered the critical path of the project. All activities that have zero slack is the critical path. They, are the, they constitute the longest path in the project, and none of those activities can be delayed without delaying the overall project. And that concludes uh, how we determine the overall project duration. Remember, we identified activities. We determined the predecessors. We sequenced them in logical order. We included the durations. We conducted the forward pass. We then conducted the backward pass to uncover which activities had slack, and we arrived at the critical path, and now we know how long it takes uh, to complete this project, and we have the beginnings of our project schedule.